we got this time? New book. Yeah, because I just got different so colors on all of them, but this one is called Let Me See You Stripped. Yeah. And it's funny, I just have to share that there's a picture. It, it's very hidden. hidden. You can, I'm standing here with my arms stretched out. It's really light on okay. this thing. And it was from a show that I did with the Hawman of South Africa. Um, the first part of the show, I was wearing a business suit and a Warhol wig and a hat, yeah. and, and I was doing things about things from around the world, and then I just started taking off layers and wig and tie and shirt, and I ended up wearing this like black spaghetti strap dress, uh -huh. and then I did these other things about talking about, it, it was, I think I was talking about the poem Communication, pencil thin wires, and this is the, the, the life that we're in, and this is a photo from that, and, and it's called Let Me See You Strip, because I had to like strip most of my clothes off to do that with my show, okay. <laughs> which is what that one is called. I was going to share uh, five poems with you from here. This one is called, Like I Was Never There. So I decided to sneak off one night and go camping with Sam and Vern. And we rolled out our sleeping bags and we were out in the far side of the field at night. Sam had brought his hurricane lamp, but he didn't have any oil for it. So him and Vern went down the street broke into a garage there, got a can of lawnmower gasoline. <laughs> because, you know, it makes perfect sense to use gasoline in an oil lamp. <laughs> but anyway, in the shadows, by the street, in the dark, they planned to fill the hurricane lamp with gas. But in the shadows, they couldn't see what they were doing. The other things are definitely at your office ready. Oh, go through. So Sam said that he needed more light, so he needed to be able to see to fill in his oil lamp with gas. So Vern decided to pull out the lighter. Vern, the bright one, was going to light the way, I suppose. And, and Vern lit his lighter, but then it still wasn't enough light. Uh, keep in mind, they were hiding in bushes by a street with a lamp post to do, what to do. Sam asked Vern for if he could move that lighter closer. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, these two flunked their way through a couple of years of school, and I know I was young, but I knew that this wasn't a good idea, so I started to back away. After I turned around, Vern apparently got the lighter too close, and I already was like 20 feet away when I felt the heat and saw this orange glow <laughs> from a fireball. Yeah. I started to run, but as I was running, I looked back and I saw two fireballs in the air. One was the lantern, and the other was the gas can. And I swear to God, that lantern crashed down to the street and set the entire street on fire. The gas can landed uphill from the lantern, pouring gasoline down the street. So flames just began starting to run and go to the gas can, further spreading this street fire. <laughs> I grabbed my sleeping bag and I ran. <laughs> I heard the sirens and I just had to act like I was never there. <laughs> this one. Oh, I got my women's issues ones. This one's called Scratch the Surface. Do you want to figure out how to get that on? I think I know. Oh, upper left hand corner. Ta -da. This is called Scratch the Surface. You don't have to pull out the book for men to know that so men can degrade the weaker sex or even assault women with the English language. Hey, they can even try to make it sound nice, call it a compliment to call us a honey, a fox, a pumpkin, their cougar, or even a pot chick. But if calling us food or animals is too degrading, I can still be your babe. I can still be your girl. I mean, calling us less than an adult can't be that bad, you know, right? You can still degrade us. But, but I figured I'd let it furious when I'm wearing a tank top, you know, because it's hot outside, and a semi or a truck honks their horn. 
I mean, do they honk them? Do they think that they're honking their horn is actually a compliment? Or are they just too busy blowing their horn to try to show off their big rig? Uh, I thought of the book for men, and it covered all of the basics, even in sex in terms that men understand. Banging, hammering, nailing, screwing, scoring. But I was in a car, and because it was warm, I was wearing a tank top. Again, the truck driver's sexual turn on. And so I got honked at by a semi driver while sitting in the car going down a highway. And that's when I heard one or more term for women. Someone informed me that after their truck horn blares, the truck driver will radio ahead to other semis and tell them the color, make, and model of a car with a good looking seat cover. Oh. Wow, a seat cover. <laughs> Thanks. Now we're reduced to good looking upholstery, something that you keep around to sit on. But wait, we can't stay pretty after you've kept us down for years before you get something prettier to replace us. So, as I sit in this car, covering myself up whenever we're near a truck, I think of the book for men with jokes objectifying women or reminding us of a bush or a slit or a crack, a box, a hole, or the farm implement like a hoe. But I'm telling you, baby doll, as thorough as that handbook seems, it doesn't even scratch the surface. <laughs> I, will end, I will end with you uh, with three pieces that are about attraction on some level. This one is more about talking about physics with it. It's called You Are Force. Is your beauty, is your soul causing my attraction to you, is it a force of nature? Mm. Are you like gravity, dropping me to my knees whenever I think of you? Or are you like magnetism, like my needs only magnified as I draw closer to you? giving me impetus to increase my velocity and join you to bond with you. That's the only way I can explain this, you know. I know your momentum. I know this special relativity causes this action-reaction. You must have a power no one else has harnessed to do this to me. This electric force between us excites me and burns me and curls me up in an arc to you. But this friction, this tension I feel when we're apart snaps me with an elastic force, reminds me that I must abide by the laws of motion when it comes to you. Because, as I said, with that, like our dynamic equilibrium, you must be a force of nature. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband thought it would be perfect to do take that poem and turn it completely around. So this is a reflection of You Are a Force to called You Repel Me. Oh, oh. We'll see how this works. Okay. Is your angst, is your soul causing me to shake near you? Is it a force of nature? Mm. Are you like gravity, forcing me to my knees, crushing me under a heavy load? Or are you like magnetism, half the people you meet are drawn to you, while, like me, the other half find you repulsive? Giving me the impulse to increase my velocity, to run, to flee from you. That's the only way I can explain this, you know. I know your momentum, I know this special relativity causes me to break down. You must have a power no one else has harnessed to do this to me. You are like electricity. Every time you touch me, I feel pain. Your touch burns my skin. But this friction, this tension I feel when we're together tears me apart like a bomb. Reminds me that I must abide by the laws of physics when it comes to you. Because as I said, you are dark energy tearing us apart. 
at an ever increasing rate because you must be a force of nature. Yeah. <laughs> I will end on this one because that's, I always have to hand in my happy note. This one's called Holding Hands. Mm -hmm. When we're walking down the street in stride and our feet pump out the same rhythm and our shoulders are almost touching and our hands seem to brush up against each other for one brief moment. In that one brief moment, he reaches over and takes my hand. He slides his fingers around my hand, and I feel him move along my palm to my fingers. When he moves along the palm to my fingers, no one knows what it feels like then, when his fingers curl and hold me tight. Well, it feels like pop rocks. <laughs> you know this feeling when it feels like pop rocks. You know what it feels like when that candy is sliding down your throat after you let it explode and it's still on your tongue and it's tingling. And it's still on your tongue but it's tingling and no one else is eating those pop rocks and no one knows this tingling feeling and this is your little secret. <laughs> And I love keeping this little secret when I feel this feeling like never before. And it makes me want to laugh and cry because when I look around the room, I see no one else is eating those pop rocks. And no one knows this feeling when he's holding my hand. No one knows this feeling when he's holding my hand. It's like candy and cupids and hearts and sunshine and all of those generic symbols of love that never explain it just right. <laughs> those words can never explain that feeling just right. It's catching your breath, facing, falling from an airplane. It's climbing a mountain. It's standing on a glacier. It's following dolphins. It's swimming with sharks. It's turning your head and seeing those fingers interlocked with yours as you're walking in stride. Because when those fingers are interlocked, you want to hold on for your life. And now you have something you've never felt. Oh just by holding his hand. Mm.